So you've moved over to Wireshark version 4 and one of the changes that you noticed was the new layout here. And it's just placing the packet bytes pane to the right of the packet details pane here. But from what I'm seeing, some of the emails I'm getting in, some people are not happy with this because when they look at their previously saved profiles, all those previously saved profiles have moved to this new format, even though they didn't ask for it. And I will admit, when you look at the new uh, layout on your old profiles, it's a less than ideal layout. And this is what you're seeing and what you're sending me as your screenshots here. If I go back to a previously saved profile, let's say this uh, slow server, and I move over, this is what we see. It's the packet bytes pane is taking up the majority of the space and maybe the developers will go in and, and change that so that this new default doesn't give as much space there to the, the packet bytes pane. Because if it came up this way, I think people would be less, um, uh, less unhappy in sending me fewer emails on this, hopefully. All right. Um, so why was this change made? Let's see. Um, the discussion... Uh, originally was sort of a, a our developers like it this way, our instructors at Sharkfest like it this way, so we're going to do it this way. But then Gerald Combs wrote a blog on the release date of 4.0 saying it's because of modern day screen format. So whatever the reason is, it just is. And I'm not going to get into the politics of that. All right, so here's what I would say though. You can change this layout very easily. So if I'm inside this profile and I I don't like the packet bytes pane taking up so much space, you know that you could just click and drag that off to the right hand side. So it's not inside your view. For those of us that have been working with a stacked view for a long time, we always click and drag or we usually click and drag that packet bytes pane out of view until we need to see it anyway. If you want to go back to the previous default layout, it's a very simple process of going to edit preferences and going to layout and choosing the first layout option there. This is one of the things that I talked about at the core IT conference, this customization and all the things that you can do in Wireshark to make Wireshark work for you. But here's another piece and I'm not gonna go through and change this setting. I'm gonna leave this as it is. Here's another thing that I would highly recommend and that is to build a profile template and create new profiles based on that profile template. So I'm going to go and create a profile template now and just show you how to do that. And I'll show you one of the columns that I always add. And I don't want to add it every single time I make a new profile. I want to have a profile template and then copy that profile template. So I'm going to right mouse click in the profile area down here and say manage profiles. And these are the profiles that I have on my system at this time. Now I have one called default, which is the one I started up with on here. And I also have one that I've created called template. Now I'm going to make a brand new one right now. And I'm going to call this sample um, template. And I'll say OK. And now this is pulling all of the default settings into it. And you'll see that we don't have that overlapping issue of the packet bytes pane on top of the packet details pane. Right? So it looks clean here. And again, you can always just click and drag this out of the way if you don't like the packet bytes pane being given so much uh, space as it is here. But besides figuring out the way you like to run Wireshark with the panes, you can also set up some default column settings that you like. So for example, for me, I don't like the number column right aligned, so I'm going to change it to align left. I don't like the length column aligned right, so I'm going to change that to aligned left. And then I always add in a column for the TCP and UDP stream index or the conversation number. So I'm going to click and drag up the TCP stream index field. I don't like it aligning to the right. I'm going to align this one center. Then I'm going to right mouse click on that column heading, edit the column, and I'm going to add on to this column by saying pipe pipe, which means or UDP, oops, lowercase, UDP.stream. So now 
in this one template, I have changed my column alignment. Uh, I'm going to go to a larger font also by default there. I've changed my column alignment. I've moved the Packet Bytes pane over to the right a bit so it's a little further out of my way. I've added a column that I like. And if I'm going to create additional profiles, I'm going to base them on my template that I built. Now, once you make a template like this, I would recommend that you just move to a new profile so that we write everything to that template and then move back to your sample template. We just want to make sure that everything is written to that or you can restart Wireshark to make sure everything was written to that template. So now I'm ready to build a brand new profile in Wireshark. I'm going to right mouse click and choose to manage my profiles. There's my sample template and I'm going to choose to copy it. And let's say this is going to be a template focused on um, analysis of initial round trip time values. I'll say OK. And now I'm in my new profile. I can see that in the bottom right hand corner. It tells me I'm in the new profile. And I can see that all of my settings are here from my profile template. So keep in mind Wireshark is a piece of clay. And even if a new um, default setting comes along that you're not a fan of, you can create a template that overrides that for all future profiles that you build in Wireshark. And you can change to the settings that you would prefer to have when you're working with Wireshark.